okay, I thought I'd try it one more time. <laughs> Sorry, folks. That's what happens when you do a live. Um, hopefully, it stays on. If it does not, I'll just say good night and try again tomorrow night. So I'll just, um, hopefully people came back. I do apologize. When you have, um, when you're dependent on the internet, this is what happens sometimes. It's actually the first time it's ever happened to me while doing a live, but I know it has happened to people. Generally, my internet is pretty reliable. But, um, like I said, it has, um, there has been an outage across the Midwest, and they were still working on that quite a bit. So next, I'm going to go to my BO2. I don't know if anybody has found me again or not. I'm hoping. Um, three people have. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. So I don't know if you guys can see that very well. And I'm going to try this again. It does look rather blurry on the image. And I do apologize. There. So I am using the um, BO2. I oop, better do this right. <laughs> so I'm using the BO2 at the moment. And let me just, I got my lids mixed up. That's not good. Just trying to correct it for a moment. Okay, so this is the BO2 and I am just pulling the colors down. And I don't know if anybody's back on or not, but I'm just going to color. And if you're there, I did update my phone last night. I'm hoping that that wasn't a problem. I know Dawn said that she couldn't see her comments because she had updated her uh, phone. And um, I'm actually not seeing, oh, there we go. I'm actually seeing the live again. Okay. Ah, hopefully no more problems tonight. So sorry. I do apologize for that. You know, it is what happens. So Sharon, you came back. Thank you. Thank you. I hope our friend from Florida came back. Hi, Carolyn. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't know if Dawn has come back or not, but I do appreciate everybody. So I am just going down. So I'm going down kind of mid, midway with my medium tone. That's what I'm doing right now. And when you color, it doesn't look the prettiest until you get your image done. So you have to be patient. You shouldn't give up. <laughs> you shouldn't chuck it in the bin until you have your completed image to make sure whether you like it or not. So I'm just going around right here. And you'll notice that these markers work wonderfully. Um, I have to say I, I like them just as much as my Copics. All right, so I am using this OR1, which is not in the series, but I like it because it, see it lightens it up. But I think if you look at a um, pumpkin, and we grow them around here, they are kind of splattered like that. That is how they look. So that's why I like this particular marker. And as you can see, it's quite a bit lighter and um, somewhat of a different tone. But it's okay, because you're going to pull this through with your other two colors, and it all works together. And if you do look at a pumpkin, that is how they look. I live in southern Indiana, and we grow tomatoes. And see, I'm trying to do the long motions to make streaks. I'm trying to make it look streaked like a pumpkin would look. We grow pumpkins around here, corn, of course, and watermelon, and tomatoes. And we have the best watermelon in the country, I think. Well, I think we also have the best tomatoes. 
we have a soil that is very conducive to growing pumpkins and watermelons and squash. So that is why it's so popular here. All right, so we're gonna go back over this again. Make sure you put the right ends <laughs> on your markers, which again, I kind of messed up there. So I'm using the BO1 again and the BO2. So I'm just gonna set them off like this, ready to go. And I'm just going back over my colors. I think it really takes two layers to make your images look finished and to bring out the color. So I'm just flicking as I go and just kind of going back over where I know it would be darker. If you're new to coloring, something I did is I put like an object and said this is the sun and this is how it's you know the rays are going or over here however I wanted it to be so I'm saying it's somewhat up there so you uh, can do that that's just a little tip that I did when I first started coloring and to be honest when you very first start you don't have to worry about shading and doing the dark colors you can look where the artist has made lines and pretty much follow that and there are no marker police, no Copic police. So do your do it how you want to do it. A 50% off code for this Digi. Oh, how nice. So I will put the link on my page to this image. I, I think I have it on there from yesterday. But there's a discount. How nice. We all love discounts. That's nice. Very nice. Now I'm going in with the B01. And I'm pulling, see I'm pulling this color through, I'm pulling it through, and you see how it, it marries the ink together, and that is really how your, your colors layer on top of each other. So you just pull it through. Now, you, like I said, you can, see, push. If you want to keep a dark color someplace, you can push, but for this image, we are pulling. And then I'm going to go with my OR1. And I'm just pulling this through. Again, you want to get your paper fairly wet when you're doing this. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Thank you for putting, she put the uh, code on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Caroline, you're new to coloring. You know, it's addictive. <laughs> I take I will take an image with me and I color wherever I go. If I'm waiting, well, actually we have a lot of trains. We have 70, this is a little tiny town. We have 70 trains go through our town a day. So I keep an image in my purse and I actually put my car in park and I will sit and color while I'm waiting on the train to go through town. But I do go to a lot of um, appointments with my kids, a lot of you know doctor's appointments and things. And I take images with me and I sit in color. Practice is the best thing you can do. Okay. So I, I feel like, you know, that's pretty good. The colors blend together fairly well. And I'm going to let it kind of dry just a little bit. And then I'm going to come back to it and do a little bit of streaking with it. So that is what I'm going to do in a moment. And this image, um, I think it's so adorable, truly. There's lots of uh, pretty pieces to it. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to do her hair. And for her hair, I am going to use, let me pull out my my colors. I am, I am doing it in an orange color as well because I just think it is, um, it goes with the pumpkin so much. So I'm using my, this is the illustrator and I am using this one because these inks are not exactly the same and this is a, a bit of a darker orange than the BO3 of the um, originals. So I'm just going in and you can see her hair is just underneath her hat. Now on an image where there's more hair focused, more hair to focus on, 
it's easier to do the shading but we're still going to do a little bit shading and light we're still going to do that but it's easier but for this really the pumpkin and these flowers are the big image uh, focus to the image these girls oh, I think they're so cute because I love their eyes oh my gosh um, it's like the little girl in us come out when we we do this I think I don't know that's what happens to me I grew up in the military and we moved all the time and so I didn't actually have very many toys and now that I'm an adult it's like I can't get enough of the um, cute cute dolls and doll images I think I'm living uh, vicariously through my children all right, so I'm going to actually take a lighter color to try to, and I am using this gold brown blend. This is um, GB1. This is a tri blend. And they all work together. Use what you have, use whatever kind of mark, alcohol markers you have. They all work. And I, and I, I love my Copics, I use them a lot. So I'm just kind of going in and giving her some highlights. I love my Copics. I use them a lot, but you don't have to use them. You can use whatever you have. And tonight, we're using something different. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do her face, and I'm going to use this also as a tri-blend. It's FS, FS6, 7, and 8, which earlier I think I said I didn't have those, but I do have them. Have this little set now with the face I do do the lighter color first and I go all around first in the lighter color to lay to get the paper wet to lay down some color and get the paper wet and for me everybody's different for me I love pink on the faces of these little girls I just I don't know it brings out their features to me so I do like to do the pink. Now I'm gonna use the dark, the F S8 around the edges of her face where her skin would be darker. Now if you're using Copics, I often use the E04 around the face and then the E00 and E000 for skin tones and the um, I think it's R20 for the uh, cheeks so that is something you can do now I'm gonna go in with um, I'm gonna use this cocktail pink PP6 for her cheeks and I'm gonna go ahead and it's quite dark that's kind of scary it's a little darker than I normally do but we're gonna tone it down so it's okay I just kind of where I think, you know, is outside. So I'm putting a little bit of pink up here. It is a bit pinker than I would normally use, but it's okay. We're going to take our light. We're going to go over the top. And um, like I said, until she's done. And if it's too pink, we'll use the the blender on it. But I think it'll be fine once we get her her um get her colored. I'm just kind of going in there and we're gonna do her eyes and I think I'm gonna do her eyes pink oh not pink <laughs> she wouldn't look very good with pink eyes I think I'm gonna do them blue um, here see I did them in blue and see I like this pink better but this was actually a different um, marker brand and I just wanted to keep with the spectrum noirs so you could see what she would look like all right, so we're going to go back in again, and I'm taking a little bit of my mid-tone, and I'm going around, see, around her eyes to give her a little definition, a little bit more around her face, a little bit over here by her uh, bridge of her nose. There we go. And so she's going to be a little bit more rosy-cheeked, and that's okay. Once we get her all colored, she's going to look fabulous. Remember, no mistakes in art. All right, so she'll look good once we get her all colored. 
And I want to welcome everybody that's watching. And, and there is a 50% off code that you um, can use. Oh, hi, V. How are you? Haven't um, seen you for a while. And there's Jesse. Oh, uh, I think we lost our person that it was in, um, oh, Florida, where I would love to be at the moment. All right, so let's do her hat. And I am actually using this um, AB3 right here for her hat, which is a deep color. And I am just going to go around like this. So I'm just going around the edges. And then I am going to use a little bit lighter in the center for the highlight, so I'm gonna use a, AP1. So, I'm just going here. Now, normally I do use three in a family, but it, this is a really small space, so I am not. So I'm just pulling the color around, and we're gonna do this twice. And you're using the lighter color where the sun would be at. And see already, um, her face is a little bit not as bright. We'll go over it again, I think. And pull it out a little bit. I get a little quiet when I'm thinking, sorry. <laughs> you know, Dawn always does a word of the day, which is so funny because I teach, and they're often the vocabulary words that my students are having to learn. They're learning the... Um, academic word list. So if you have anybody studying for SATs or anything, it's a good list to have your children learn. Yeah, I see a little smidgen of hair right here. See, I always go back and I go back in. I feel like once the ink dries a little bit that you can add a little bit of shading or highlighting either way and it picks it up. So that's, I always go back into mine a little bit. Yeah, everybody's different. Um, I'm always kind of tweaking my image as I go. And everybody has a different style, and there's no one right style. Don't, uh, don't feel like you have to do it a certain way. Some people start dark, some colors first, some people do light. So I used the AP3 for her lips, which is what we used on her hat, too. I think it pulls it together nicely. And see, already... Her face is nice and rosy. In the end, we'll do her eyes at the, when we get completely done. Oh, Caroline is from Wales. Oh, hi, from Wales. Wow, how cool is that? I thought there was a Caroline on here that said that she was in Florida. So, clearly, oh, I can't read very well. How cool is that? Well, welcome. And that is so neat that you're watching from Wells. The world is so small, TN7. The world is just such a small place nowadays. You can just, people can just reach out from everywhere. It's so amazing. And how amazing that we can get on Facebook and chit chat to people, make phone calls, do these lives. And it's free. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, this would have cost a fortune to do. So life has really changed. I just think it's so amazing. It's wonderful. If you have children in college, you can get on your iPads, your phones, whatever, and you can eat dinner together across the miles. Now what I'm doing is I'm layering, because really when you color, you're layering. layering and if you do not have the three shades, you can just go over it like I'm doing here and make it, see, darker, and that makes your middle, see the middle is lighter. You c this is another way to stretch what you have. You don't have to go out and buy all the markers. Okay, so we are going to move on to our sunflowers, and I'm gonna do her outfit but um, last. I, I, I have no, there's no method here. <laughs> oh, Carolyn's a good friend of yours, Sharon. Oh, how nice is that? That's wonderful. That is very good. And Wales is a lovely country. 
I am going to do my uh, leaves actually in this uh, uh, GB1, GB3, not my leaves, my sunflowers, GB5. I'm going to use that. And then I am going to use uh, TN7 for the middle. So that is what I'm going to do right now. And again, no rhyme or reason. I just chose where I was going to do my shadows. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take my dark. See here, I'm going with my dark first. And I'm just going in right here and just kind of flicking it. And everybody does this differently. I'm doing it towards myself. Um, here, you can do it away from yourself. It's whatever way you feel most comfortable. To be truthful, I generally turn my image all around. And um, I know that can make people feel a little bit seasick. So I'm trying not to do that tonight. So now I am going to go with my middle, my mid-tone, my GB three and I'm just going to go right in here and I'm actually pushing it pushing down on this layer pushing the color towards it because I want there to be some definition when I get done so the next layer I'm gonna flick out and then I'm using the light I love sunflowers. I think they're just so, so pretty. We have some that grow wild here where I live in. Indiana's uh, fickled and it's quite cold right now. Last week we had the air conditioner on and today we have the heater on. It's kind of funny how it works, but we'll get cold here soon. All right. Thank you, um, Rob, and I appreciate you putting the code. This is the shop, my bestie's shop, and I typed it out because my handwriting is terrible. Should be better since I'm a teacher, but it is not. You would think that I would have learned to write better. It's funny, I can write on the board really well and it looks beautiful on the board, but when I hand write on paper, it doesn't look so great. So I'm just going in just ever so slightly around this leaf. And now I am doing my mid-tone. One day, you shared the, the link a, a zillion times, that's great. One day I plan to travel to um, I want to go to England. My family's in England. I want to go to England. I want to go to Scotland. I want to go to Ireland. I want to go to Wales. I want to um, spend a day in France. I'd love to just kind of travel around one day soon, hopefully. And, you know, have to save up. But that's on my bucket list to travel to see other countries besides whatever I go to the UK, I always go to England, so I'd like to see some other countries. Then I can stop in and see Sharon. Now you see how it's graduating the um, light to dark. I just, these images are just so pretty. Now I'm going to do the light around the band here. So you can see a difference. And then I'm gonna do the center. Then we have one flower done. So I'm going to use this TN7 right here for my center. And it's, you know, a little darker than I used the first time, but that's okay because we'll go over it with our light marker in a moment. And that's make it tone it down just a little bit. See, there we go. And what I do, oh, you got to, who's leaving? Oh, Carolyn. I don't know if it's Carolyn or Car Caroline, but it was very, very, very nice to meet you. And thank you for joining us. I really appreciate that. And I hope that you get into coloring. Hope you join us sometime. Now see, I'm pushing some of the brown out and that 
helps with the shading. And see, I'm going back in and see it's lightening it up quite a bit. And I want it to be a bit splotchy, so I'm just kind of going in with my marker. If you go in with a lighter color, it will sort of bleach out, say bleach out your color a bit. You can use your blender, your blender pen for a similar effect, but I feel like it like strips strips the color more than you want. So I don't I personally don't use my blender pen very much. Some people swear by them. Okay, so I'm going to take my golden brown again. And I'm keeping these colors pretty consistent with each other, pretty um, cohesive. You don't have to. You can use your imagination any way you want. I just really thought these colors looked very pretty with the paper that I had picked out. And now I am actually going to go with my lighter, my middle, my mid-tone. And go in here. Oh, do you hear the train that I talked about? Hear, hear the whistle blowing? Oh, you sent her 90 markers, so she should be coloring with us soon. <laughs> she should really appreciate you, Sharon. So nice when we receive gifts. I actually received a nice gift right down here from Sharon, right here. So, it was so sweet of her. I've actually taken the things out and have already used some of them. But I so appreciate Sharon for sending those. Thank you. It's always nice when we receive something. It makes us feel special. And I try to send out things once in a while to other people. And sometimes people appreciate them. Sometimes you never hear from the person again. <laughs> but that's okay. Where do you guys want to travel? I said where I want to travel. I want to travel around all around the UK. Uh, where do some of you want to travel? So maybe Sharon, where would you like to travel? If you could travel anywhere you, you want, no money involved, and no worries about money or health, where would you travel at, Sharon? I also myself would like to go to Asia. I think that would be so wonderful. Okay, I am using uh, YG1 and YG3 on my uh, leaves. So that is what I'm going to do next. I was looking, I thought I had one more. Okay. Oh, here we go, YG2. I, I was pretty sure I had three markers. All right, so this is what I accomplished last time. So I am going to go in, I'm actually going to go with my darker color and kind of go in here. You know, um, on the lives, you just never know who's going to be with us. Oh, somebody said Austria. Oh, Austria and Scotland. I Austria, I've been to Austria when I was a kid and it is, I've been to Austria and Switzerland uh, when I was a kid and it's just beautiful. You would love it, Dawn. And of course, you'd love Scotland. Aww. Oh, hi, Gail. We're talking about where you would like to travel if you could travel anywhere in the world and money and health were not an issue. Where would you like to travel? So, let's see. Oh, Icelandic cruise. Ooh, that would be nice. Actually, Iceland here is a wonderful place to visit. Wonderful, like, destination for vacation spot. That it's, it's wonderful. So that sounds cool, Sharon. A cruise, a cruise sounds wonderful. And I love the ocean and the sea very much. But I don't know if I could uh, handle being stuck for days out on a ship. I'm not sure. I've thought about that often, if I could do it or not. My brothers, uh, when they were born, they came over on a ship to the United States and they were on this ship for like two weeks with my mother coming over to the U.S. when they were about two and three years old. So that must have been very difficult for her. So I'm just kind of going in and adding a bit of shading around the, the leaves to give it a bit of dimension. So that's what I'm doing. 
You would like to see all your American friends. Yes. Uh, you would be surprised if you came over here how big the U.S. is. People are always shocked when they haven't come to the U.S. And then they come how big and how far apart everything is. And how different every single state is. So, Gail, where would you like to travel? Let's see, did you say? We know she'd like to go to Florida. <laughs> My problem is I go to the same places over and over again when I travel because I fall in love with the place. I'm doing YG3 on these little leaves. I fall in love with a place, and I just want to go there every time I have a vacation. So now when I go on vacation, I always go to Savannah, to Tybee Island. I say every year I'm going to go someplace different. And every year when it comes around time to go on my vacation... I go back to the same place because I just love it there. And we only have so many vacation days a year, don't we? So, I just go to the same places all the time. Same thing when I go to England. I always think, oh, I'm going to take a day trip to Ireland and I'm going to go to France. But then when I get there, I don't leave the little town that I'm visiting at in England because I don't get there that often. So, I have a bad habit of of not um, expanding myself. You got got my earplugs. Oh, Kevin's mom, she came here. Oh, how nice. I've had family come um, here from, from England. And I have some family that goes every year to uh, uh, Florida, to Disney World every single year. They buy um, tickets. And they go every year. This year they kind of got stuck in the uh, hurricane. Their flight was delayed. And they couldn't leave when they had planned. Yeah, if you're enjoying it, it's okay where you take your vacation. That's so true. And I do enjoy. I love going to Tybee. I, love, I go to the same places in Savannah every time I visit. Because I absolutely I love it there. I, mean, I desperately want, would like to live there, but, you know, life throws us some curves sometimes. I'm just kind of going in, and then on this little flower, I didn't do a lot with shading. I just kind of went in there. And then we're going to do her vine. And I'm just kind of going in circles here. And I'm just kind of blotching that up a little bit, going back through it again. There we go. All right. That's true. You should go wherever you enjoy. And I'm going to go with the YG1 for the vine. Oh, I am getting quiet again. I know because <laughs> I'm concentrating. Sorry. And if anybody has any questions, you know, you can ask. We have a wonderful group of people that do lives. We have Sharon, who's the noble crafter. And we have um, Gail, which is Gail Sue. And we have Dawn, which is uh, Dawn G Designs. And then if you're watching and you're not, if you haven't liked my page, please like my page. So we have a, a wonderful group that loves to do lives and chit chat. We love it when you join us. So I'm just and I see I, I forgot a leaf. I'm gonna go back in there and just trying to go through this carefully. She is such a pretty image, isn't she? Just going through. Um, Gail is uh, quick, quick. She has been making cards for a long time, and she is, like, phenomenal when she does her cards. It's amazing. And I am going back in a little bit darker color just to try to add a little bit of shading in here. So, Gail is phenomenal. Dawn makes beautiful, elaborate layers. And then Robin... I'm sorry, not Robin. I don't know where that came from. Uh, Sharon and 
uh, her husband are hilarious when they are bantering back and forth. It's just as cute as can be. All right, so now we are gonna focus on her clothes. And I just think, oh my gosh, isn't she beautiful? All right, so here we go. For her trousers, I am, let me pull out my colors here. Make sure I have them. I am using AB2 and AB3. And I am also going to do a, um, let me pull it out. A BB3 and two right here. So we're going to do that first. So I'm just coming kind of on the sides. This marker is um, a bit juicy here. It's not my favorite word to use. I don't like certain words in our vernacular that I don't like to use. I try to get my students not to use them. Oh, no, not so fast with coloring. Yes, you are. You are so phenomenal, Gail. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's lives are just so fun to watch. Now, see, I'm going in with my lighter color and um, trying to give it a little bit of a rounded look. Going back in with my darker color. Uh, Thanksgiving traditions. In my family... You know, my mother uh, actually didn't like to celebrate Thanksgiving since she wasn't American. But um, for my family, we do have turkey. And then I make a Indian, American Indian corn pudding that we have. And then I make trifle, which is not an English trifle, which is not American. But it's just not Christmas without it or Thanksgiving without it. <laughs> What's other people's Thanksgiving traditions? Hi, Zoranda. How are you? Gail, do you have any Thanksgiving traditions? I am going with my AP3, AP1. And to do her trousers. That's what I'm working on now. I'm going ever so lightly by her... Um, Tips. <laughs> yeah, so what are some of your Thanksgiving traditions, anybody? I'd love to hear them. I know some people make a lemon meringue pie or, you know, they have certain foods that they just love to have. And for us, it's a trifle for dessert. And I make the corn pudding and turkey. Now, my husband likes um, different foods than we do. This is my second marriage, and so uh, he likes things a little bit different than my grown children like. So I do try to incorporate what he likes. So, huh, nobody's answering. Nobody has any uh, American traditions, or not American, but traditions for Thanksgiving that they like to to incorporate. Hmm. I bet Dawn does, but I don't know that she found us again or not. I'm not sure. I bet she she does. I often have my students come over for Thanksgiving. They're learning English and many of them don't have any place to go. And I have had as many as 18 students over at my house for dinner for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. And, and really, we have quite a small house to have all our family. All together, my husband and I have seven children. To have all our children and my students is quite a lot. So I'm just going back in and just kind of pulling this through. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I am doing her uh, shirt. And I am going to use this um, AB2 and AB3. So I'm just going in where Sherry, who is the artist, has already um, 
put extra like shading in and then I'm going in between her knees in this V and around see it's kind of and then up here by her shoulder and around her scarf and over here also and then I'm gonna go here now my aunt when she came over from she is precious Gail my aunt when she came over from England she despised the pumpkin pie she thought that was horrendous so I'm using my AB2 Actually, my birthday is around Thanksgiving time, and sometime, last year it was on Thanksgiving. So I'm going back in again, and just carefully. This is a four-inch image, but she's still relatively small because she's sitting inside this pumpkin. Just going back over again. Just where it would be darker. <clears throat> and let me see. Kind of got a hodgepodge of colors around me. I'm going to go back because I see I missed a little bit around her fingers. There we go. There we go. I see a little spot too right there. All right. <clears throat> now I am doing her patches. And for her patches... I am going to use, let me pull it back up here. I'm going to use PL, a PL as my background color. And then we're going to put the pink in on top. Oh, PL is not as, I thought it would be more purpley, but that's okay. So we're just going to use this as the background color. Like this. Like so. Who says that? Like so. <laughs> Who is that? That is Dawn. <laughs> it plays in my head. So I'm just doing her dots. And then I am going in here and putting it in on her patch. And I am also going to do every other stripe. There we go. Like so. <laughs> she does it better than I do. See, I did it kind of the opposite. I did the pink and the bluish. But here I did it the opposite. Now, we're going to do her scarf. And I'm going to use the um, AP3 on her scarf. And my AP1, which we used on her hat. So I'm doing the edge. This right here. Because I really wanted it to kind of match up with her um, hat. And and this color, if you use reds, they bleed. And this color here bleeds quite a bit. So you got to be really careful with it. And I'm going back in. So far, so good with the internet. Thankfully, I was really worried there for a few moments. Let me see if... Um, Popcorn and soda. Mm, I love popcorn. Oh my gosh. Uh, Dawn. Oh, Dawn's still there. She makes pumpkin pies from Cinderella pumpkins. Oh my gosh. And Dawn has turkey homemade stuffing, sauerkraut. My husband would love that. He loves sauerkraut. Mac and cheese. Ooh. You know, um, I have never in my life had mac and cheese in my entire life. I know that is like such a big deal here. I have never, my, I don't know. I love, you know what I also like is sugar cream pies. We live in the, here where I live at in Indiana is the largest Amish population in, in Indiana. And they have stores here and they'll take orders for food. And so I always order a um, sugar cream pie. Oh my gosh, I love them. Now I am doing her shoes and I am actually doing them in the same colors that I did the sunflower. So I'm taking the darker color 
and I'm going around see I'm going around the edges and like this look so I can't do it I can't do it like Dawn <laughs> I love watching Dawn's lives because she's so funny she's let's party let's party <laughs> I sent her a card that said let's like that says party on it. Um I when she was doing a live one time it like tickled me so much. <laughs> so I made a card that said that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um what is uh, what no mac and cheese? No, I have never, you know, never in my life had mac and cheese. I don't even know if if I could um be bold enough to take a bite. <laughs> I know that sounds um, different, doesn't it? But that's just not something I've ever had. My mom is English. You got to remember that. My mother's British. And the foods I ate are quite different than my friends have eaten. Um, we ate a lot of beans and toast growing up. And now people look at me and they think that's very odd. I hope you're not seeing this. I have little tiny, they're called fruit flies. They're little teeny tiny things. The um, crops around us are being harvested and things are being left behind and are um, kind of rotting. I'm going to use a, um, I'm not going to use this color because it's too similar. I'm going to use this light color for the background. This light, um, what is it? F FS six the fields are rotting around us so there's fruit little fruit flies so i hope you don't see them flying around here you put water with vinegar in a cup to get rid of them so i'm just doing the inside of her little pumpkin she, like a pumpkin chalet right here isn't she cute oh my gosh and see now um her little rosy cheeks they're not quite as dominant now that we have the other colors going. I do like a little bit pinker. This is a little rosier than I normally do, but, you know, I'm fine with it. It's okay. And I do go back in. I feel like, that, just like when you paint your house, that the walls absorb uh, the color. I think that happens when you when you use markers. Now I use my gel pen on the eyes. I know some people use their markers, but I, I like to use my gel pens. And so I'm just gonna, and I typically leave a little bit of white in this, in her like eye down here. Well, just a little bit kind of sets it off, I think. And then I take my gel pen my white gel pen, and I just touch up just a little bit. Now, if you get outside the lines and it bothers you, you can take your gel pen and you can like color outside and it will cover it up. Copic has um, a, a, like a, an ink that you can use, but I prefer my gel pens. All right, so now we're gonna do her uh, background. And I am also going to do this ground here. Now here I actually used um, a gray here to do her to do the ground. I was going to do something a little different. I am going to actually use distress ink. And I'm gonna do the ground with that. I'm using Mode Lawn. Oh, thank you, thank you, whoever said that. Oh, Sharon, thank you. Sharon, uh, <laughs> I might, <laughs> uh, I might do the background I was thinking of doing. Um, we'll see. I did have an idea for the background. I see something in my head, and I will go for it. And um, people often laugh at me, thinking that you spent all that time nicely coloring, and then you gobble up your background. But <laughs> I do see something in my head, um, and I might do it. 
<laughs> we'll see. So I'm just using Distress Ink and I'm using my a blender brush. And these were not expensive blender brushes. I got these at uh, off of Amazon. So I'm just kind of going in there. And then I have one stamp with some grass on it. See, on the bottom, it's a flower. And on the bottom part, it's got some grass. So I use this. And I don't, see, I don't stamp my flower part. And I, this was some, I don't know, like a freebie. I don't know what it was. And see, I love it for my grass. So you could look through your stamps. You know, it might have been a um, like a paper pumpkin kit. I used to get them or a Simon Says kit, something like that. And um, just look through what you have and see if you have anything that you could use to make your grass. See? So that is what how I kind of do my grass with this little simple stamp. And then I take a different ink, and this one is um, Bundled Sage. These little Distress inks are nice. Let's see, I just kind of go, because I don't think grass should be all one color. So I just kind of go in there like that. I don't know. Now I'm chicken to do my little background, but I might do it. So I'm just kind of, takes longer to do the grass than it did to color the image, right? Okay, so there we are. And let me go up here. Now, if you want to see other people color, Dawn does three lives a week um, at various times. I think Thursday's at 1, Sunday at 3, and maybe Tuesday at 7, I think. And then Gail does it a couple of times a week in the evening. And then Robin does it sp uh, sporadically. And I do it Friday evenings, but I'm going to start maybe a second evening I'm thinking about starting. Now, I'm doing this background. And so I'm just going to... I'm using um, Squeezed Lemonade, which I actually love this color. And I am just kind of starting off the paper a little bit and going on. Like this, like this. <laughs> it plays in my head right, Dawn. I just can't say it like you say it. Like so, she says like so, not like this. Like so, like so. There we go. Now I'm gonna take, this is a mustard seed. And I'm just, it's a bit of a, kind of a little bit darker, and I'm just going in. I never think anything should be um, kind of flat, so I kind of mix up my colors just a little bit. Up, and then, oh, my phone's about not not the one I'm recording on. My other phone's about to die. So then I'm going to take just a little bit of another color. This tea dye and I'm just gonna come in here kind of go in it just a little bit just oop, a little bit more than I wanted it's okay just kind of blend it in take a little bit of the yellow and I go over it okay now <laughs> now should I do the background that I was thinking of. You see, I see her, she's in this pumpkin, and where would a pumpkin be but in a pumpkin field, right? So I was thinking of doing blades of grass. That's what I was thinking of doing. And um, so, let me see. Um, See, let me see whether I should do it or not. I hate to mess up my image, but okay, what do you think?
Should I do my blades of grass or not? Did I say Robin again? <laughs> you know, I'm going to confess something. <laughs> I have a, a, a little bit, I have aphasia. And I will think the right thing and say the wrong word. And um, something I developed about 10 years ago. So, um, I'm sorry. At least I say words. There's people that have it that don't say words. I'm just kind of practicing. All right. I think she's in a in a pumpkin and pumpkins are in a field and there should be grass around. So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm just doing like blades of grass. So I'm just doing some blades of grass. And so of course some are going to be, you know, kind of through All right, and maybe I'm ruining my image, but I just, this is what I see in my head. So I'm just kind of blades of grass, okay? And grass kind of grows randomly, right? Kind of randomly. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. So, um, so like so. <laughs> All right, so I just saw blades of grass maybe it doesn't look good it's okay no mistakes in art that's what i always say now i'm going to take the um bundled sage again and i'm just going i'm just kind of doing it off here and then i'm just kind of going over it because um i don't want it too harsh you know your um your markers can be harsh so I'm just kind of going over it. Okay, now we're going to assemble the card. You don't have to do that. That was just kind of like in my head. Here is Here it is without the grass. And maybe, oh, sorry if you heard that slamming. Um, maybe, sorry, I hear one of my little ones. Uh, I don't know what he's doing, sorry. All right, now these are the colors I picked out. I already made my card base and I'm using craft because of fall. And this paper, I just think it's so pretty. This is actual basil paper here. And then this was a Jan, um, Jan something. It's something I picked up at um, Tuesday morning. And I just thought, oh my gosh, this paper, the colors are perfect. This, the colors here inspired the colors I used for my card for my marker selection. And that is something I think people will tell you to do is to pick out your paper. And actually my Bestie Shops has wonderful paper selections. Just wonderful. Um, you could use my Bestie's paper too. I just, I didn't have any here on hand. So this is what I'm using. I do it, see, backwards like this. So I make sure that it sticks and I like to use this art glitter glue and now I matted again and this is not a perfect square it's okay this one actually that I did here was more perfect but that's okay so I am putting this one down I just think it looks pretty to have um, use different papers for interest but you don't have to, you don't have to do that. Now, I am going to take this one right here and I am going to pop it up. I actually thought I had some paper already. What I'm gonna do is, see I'm gonna put it here and you're just seeing the edges. And what I'm gonna do is take, I'm, I'm matting it. I'm actually going to take just a little bit off the edge here. If I, oh, see if I can find my, this is just a Fiskars cutter. I'm just going to take a little bit off, just a smidgen. And a little smidgen off the side. It's a technical term. And Sharon, see I got your name right. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I do that. 
I do that with my students, and um, I just tell them to laugh at me. When they laugh at me, I know that I have said the wrong thing, and I'm so sorry. I blame it on my job I had back when I developed it. I worked at work one. I thought I had had a stroke, to be perfectly honest, and went through a lot of testing, and it was a, what they call aphasia. It's just a part of your brain kind of um, suffers an injury. And some people make up words, and I say the wrong word. It's usually um, like if a name, or if I want to say I like your trousers, I might say I like your shirt. It's usually in the same context. I have said a bad word to somebody, not meaning to, thinking I was saying something different. So sorry. It doesn't happen all the time. It's just a stress thing. And uh, so that's why people don't notice it very often. All right. So I'm just again. Now I am going to pop this up. Now see, it's you just see the ed edges, and then I made a sentiment. You just see the edges. People say, "Oh my gosh, you're wasting your paper," but you see enough of the paper. You don't. You just want to see a hint of it. It's okay. It's not wasting anything. I think it looks lovely. So I'm gonna pop this up. And I just have this, I get this at Dollar Tree. If I want it higher, I double it, double the um, thickness, you know. Whew. I think I'm about out of this roll. Uh oh, I have more, I have lots more. But at Dollar Tree, you don't know if you're going to get a solid roll or it comes like this also. I'll show you. It comes like this where it's little pieces. Now, if I was Gail, I'd get my little pokey tool and I would zip, 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 zip. But I am not able to do that. So if you want to see somebody that knows how to use this little pokey tool and somehow she magically picks these off with it. I don't know how. I have one of those tools, but I'm not able to do it. But she just like, boom, 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 boom. It's quite good. Oh, did somebody say I'm wasting paper? I'm not. I'm really not. Oh, um, Carrie, how are you? How are you? So nice of you to join us. I'm not really wasting paper. I think the, the paper adds to your card. I just think the almost the more paper you use, the prettier. Now, like I said, you don't have to do. I was trying to do grass. I wouldn't do it again. I think it looks better without the grass, but that's okay. I was just experimenting. Now, I made the sentiment. <clears throat> I typed it up on my computer. <clears throat> I put, you're my favorite pumpkin in the patch. And the other night, I got up about mm, like a about 3.30 in the morning to craft, and I was making this card, and I said, you're my patch favorite pumpkin, and posted the picture, and then I realized, uh-oh, that was not right. So I uh, had to quickly fix that. I'm actually gonna use my trimmer a little bit so I can have a little bit nicer edge on this. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. Now, um, I've cut it too short over here on this edge, so we are going to try to do a little bit of a, I call it a kite cut. I don't know if that's the correct term or not. And what I do is I kind of go like this, and then... I take my scissors and I cut a V. I, you know, I'm not 100% sure what you call that. Now, I took, this is Cajun Glaze, and I, uh, like this, um, makes it stand out a little bit. And then just kind of in here. Now with this one, 
I'm going to pop it up and I use little, I have these, I don't know if I have very many left or not. I don't really have very much left. I used to be a stamping up demonstrator and these were my little dots. This is what Gail can zip through. These are the little dots that we used to sell. They're fabulous. And here. Now something I do if I'm gonna mail this card out is I glue, I put glue, a little drop of glue on these as well. Cause I have found, I've said this before, that my friends I give cards to and when they keep the cards, after about a year, the adhesive dries out and they were falling apart. So that's why I started using this art glitter glue because cards were falling apart. Now, I am actually going to, and you could mat this, make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm just going to put that right here. See, you're my favorite pumpkin in the patch. So this is the completed card. This is the one I did before, and I did the this square with a little different paper that I thought was so cute. But I think it looks good with this one too. So, you know, here we go. So those are the completed cards. So you can do it with grass or without, whichever way you like it. It's okay. Your flag in could go whichever way you like. You can make up any sentiments you want on your computer if you don't have something in your stash. So, ah, thank you, Carrie. Is that card coming to Scotland? It might, it might, yeah. Yeah, wasting paper is better than hoarding paper. That's what Cynthia said. That is so true. Oh, Victoria, hello. Thank you for joining us. And there is a 50% discount if on this image. And Sharon has posted the link, and I will post it on my page, too. So um, that's the completed image. You know, you can do what you want with your images. Uh, like on this one, I gave her green skin and maroon hair. You can have fun. You don't have to color everything one way. You know, here I gave on this card this girl... Um, pinkish hair. So, you know, have fun with what you do. It should all be about uh, just enjoying your art and enjoying yourself. So anyway, so I appreciate everybody joining me and I hope that you will kind of follow along with us and have fun with us because that's what we're doing. We're just having fun. Uh, nothing too heavy or serious with our card making. We just love what we're doing. So thank you. Oh, pink hair in October. Yes, yes. That is a good idea. Um, I've had, uh, well, I had a, an illness myself at one time. Uh, and we have a maroon, not a maroon, a um, turquoise. Turquoise is our ribbon. Yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. Yes, the pink is for um, breast cancer awareness. The uh, turquoise or purple is for thyroid cancer awareness. So if people do use different ribbons so yes thank you everybody and thank you for joining me and if you haven't liked my page please like my page and follow my blog i do have a youtube channel that i'm going to start posting more videos on and i'll put the link on but thank you everybody and i will see everybody later bye <laughs>